It's time for the Todd Wilkerson Show. Learn all about Heritage Hills football. This week's show is sponsored by Milligan Communications, Street Dreams, and the Southwestern Indiana Sports Network, powered by Milligan Brosmer Communications. Go Patriots! Wanting to scan those old videos, films, or audio to DVD? We'll look no further than Milligan Communications. We can also scan your old pictures, slides, and negatives to picture quality as well. With thousands of happy customers, let Milligan Communications help put your treasured memories on a digital media. Call Milligan Communications today at 812-630-2449. Milligan Communications, capturing your yesterdays. You dream it, we create it at Street Dreams. Custom paint, fabrication, stereos, wheels, tires, and more. We're also your authorized Sinister Sound dealer. Street Dreams, 317-624-1000, where you expect quality and get Hey everyone, Joey Chestnut here, world champion competitive eater. I follow Southwest Indiana Sports Network, and if you're hungry for sports, you should follow them too. Hello and welcome to this week's Todd Wilson Show. And Coach, last week you took on Southridge in the sectional finals, and you dropped that game 42 to 14. I'm sure you can't that game for us. Yeah, I got off to a rough start. You know, uh, we, we've had trouble with that all year, and, uh, you know, what kind of bit us again? We we gave up a big play early, just basically blew a blew a coverage, let a guy get behind us, and and then and didn't get him on the ground late late later, and you know they got up seven zero pretty quick, um, and then you know we had some turnover issues, uh, fumbled the ball um, midfield, and and they came back with a little trick play and hit another one on us real quickly, so they got up fourteen to nothing in the first quarter and. Um, you know, it, it's kind of the same situation we got into last time with them in terms of just getting behind early and, and, and allowing them to, to probably be a little more aggressive in some situations just because of the game score. Um, you know, we look, we look at the film, uh, you know, I always have to go back regardless, uh, at the end of the season when we, when we, uh, lose our final game and, and get statistics off the game and, and coaches have already met and talked about the game and, you know, it's it's a, it's amazing how you can look at a game and look at some big plays again that can really swing momentum. And and we just had, uh, you know, too many big plays in that first half uh, that that just put us behind the eight ball and we couldn't recover. Um, you know, again, we fumbled a a kickoff. Um, well, I'll go back. We you know we got down twenty one nothing. We hit a big score. Uh, Hunter Meredith made a fantastic catch, one of the one of the best catches I've seen in high school football, on a 65-yard touchdown pass uh, from from Jack Goldsberry. Just a tremendous play, and we get in, we get back to 21 to seven, and we knew we were getting the opening kickoff of the second half, so uh, that was a huge play uh, in the second quarter. Uh, we kick off and and we hold Southridge uh, the first two plays and get them in third and long and you know and honestly you know as a coaching staff we're thinking okay we get the opening kickoff in the second half we hold them here we get them to punt to us we maybe get a you know a field goal on the board or or uh, at least stop them from scoring and we can settle down a little bit and get back into this game we had uh, a third and long where we just we blew a coverage. Um, and uh, they made the play, converted the first down, and ended up converting another third and long on that same drive right before half um, where we had two opportunities to get them off the field and didn't do it. Um, and, and we're down 28-7 to and then fumble the next kickoff and give them great field position and go down 35-7. to and, and at that point, you know, you're, you're really uh, going into halftime struggling uh, whereas, you know, you just, uh, one of those plays, we get them off the field and, and go into halftime 21-7 and get the opening kickoff. We scored pretty quickly in the second half 
to make it 35-14. So, you know, you go back and say, well, gosh, if we if we got, got them off the field, could have got it to 21-14, maybe we get a sec, uh, you know, a better second half. But it is what it is. You know, you, you've got to make those big plays in, in big games against great teams, and, and we just didn't do it Friday night. We just didn't have our best. And, uh, you know, that's the way it is. You don't, don't have your best in, in November, and, and you, you turn in equipment on Monday. So uh, Southridge is an outstanding football team. They, they just execute at a very high level. Uh, I feel like they've got great chemistry in terms of you can just tell the way their players uh, are, are playing right now. And, and you know, I, I expect them to, to give Lawrenceburg a great game uh, this week in the regional. And you know, um, you know, you average four point two yards per carry, and you know that's that's nothing to sneeze at. So it, it, that means first down every time. Every time. No, I mean we we didn't have a terrible offensive game. Uh, we 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 hit some bit better plays. We just got behind so quickly that we really had to probably get out of our our comfort zone and throw the ball more um, than we would have. Um, we needed to throw the ball more, anyways. I think. Uh, and we had that in the plan, but um, you know, getting down thirty-five-seven is one of those deals where you or you know, you just you're, you're going to be throwing the ball a lot more than you want to. But I think we gave up over five hundred yards of offense to Southridge, and that's just you know too many huge plays where we just uh, um, you know didn't didn't have enough guys there to make a play or totally blew a coverage uh, you know twice uh, on the on the big pass early in, in the first quarter, and on the they did a little reverse pass where we. Uh, just didn't pay attention to the guys running right through the secondary. So, you know, you, you just can't make those big big mistakes. Uh, we did, and you know that that uh, ends our season. But um, you know, we we uh, I feel like we really made some strides. You know, in the latter part of the season, we we got better. We just weren't good enough this year. And we're back on the top of the show. I think that's the spot. Listen to the Southwest New York Sports Network, powered by Modern Bus for Communications. It's time for the Nate Hawkins Show. Learn all about Heritage Hills basketball straight from the coach. The Nate Hawkins Show, exclusively on the Southwestern Indiana Sports Network. drive go get them danny and the dreams that drive you american family insurance insure carefully dream fearlessly hey everyone joey chestnut here world champion competitive eater i follow southwest indiana sports network and if you're hungry for sports you should follow them too And we're back on the Tidewalkers of the show. And Coach, I know the season didn't end like you wanted it to, but, you know, you had, you had a great group of seniors at finish 7-5 this season, 3-2 in the big, in the big uh, school pocket athletic conference. And, uh, you know, you can't seize at that. Right. I, you know, we, we are always so proud of our seniors for – uh, playing football in our program, you know, uh, we look around every year when when we're finished and and we we congratulate them and and tell them how proud we are of them for committing the time and energy and effort they have over their career uh, to to contribute to our program. You know, this year we had 15 seniors. You know, this group, uh, you know, worked very hard. Um, you know, didn't didn't have the success we'd hoped this this year, but they had great attitudes every week. In practice, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they were a pleasure to be around, uh, you know, and I think that's all you can ask of kids is show up with a great attitude and get to work. And, and, you know, we talk about many times the, the life, life, uh, lessons you learn from football and, and, uh, you know, overcoming adversity and doing things that are, are difficult, doing hard things and, and having a vision for, 
doing hard things, getting through difficult times and, and realizing that, you know, in life bad things are going to happen and, and you just have to, you have to grieve a little bit and then you have to get back to work and, and you have to keep putting one foot in front of the other. And, and, uh, you know, if you do that w- with a, with a plan, uh, you can, you can have a pretty good life and you can, you can be successful in life. So, you know, these, these kids showed, by sticking with football for four years, um, they can do that. And, and uh, you know, I believe that every one of them is, is going to have a successful career in, in whatever path they choose. And we'll be back on the Tyrell Wolves and Joe Radley's messages from our sponsors. You're listening to the Southwest Indiana Sports Network, powered by Northern Brussburg Communications. Wanting to scan those old videos, films, or audio to DVD? We'll look no further than Milligan Communications. We can also scan your old pictures, slides, and negatives to picture quality as well. With thousands of happy customers, let Milligan Communications help put your treasured memories on a digital media. Call Milligan Communications today at 812-630-2449. Milligan Communications capturing your yesterdays. And we're back on the Todd Wilkerson Show. Now let's go to the seniors, and maybe you can say a few words after I say each name, okay? Sure. Okay, Shane Staples. Well, uh, Shane and Skyler, I'll just just stay, talk about those together. Um, those kids, you know, just very proud of their effort, um, you know, Running the ball over the over the last several years, they both had almost the same yardage, the same number of touchdowns this year. Uh, two very physical kids, and uh, and I'm and I'm just so happy that they uh, contributed uh, to our program. Camden Ship, Camden, you know, again, Camden just gave us a great effort at quarterback in the last two years, and in the secondary, he did what he was asked to do. Um, he he was a good teammate, and I and I think uh, you know Camden been in the situation he was in accepted uh you know what was best for the team uh when we had to make uh changes with a good attitude and and uh and again camden's going to have success in his future caleb hoke song caleb got very proud of caleb he got a touchdown his this last game against southridge we've been trying to get him a touchdown a hard-working kid and, and really came a long way at receiver Braden Furch. Braden, you know it was just a a great uh player for us steady all year he had an injury uh, week three and but uh, remained a good vocal leader of our team uh, and it was great to get him back the last couple weeks of the season uh, you know running the ball he really developed into a nice running back and nice defensive end Blake Tutliger you know Blake obviously uh, you know with his accident last year was just an inspiration to all of us you know, fighting through that and and uh, learning how to run on his prosthetic and and being a part of the team every every week, uh, it was great to see him get a two point conversion this year and get him out on the field a little bit. Um, very proud of 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 the way he's responded to the adversity that he's faced. Uh, Brendan Chu, you know, Brendan, great vocal leader on our team, uh, outstanding young man, worked very hard. Uh, second, or th- I'm sorry, third in the team in tackles. Um, just did everything we asked, and you know, just a, a big piece of the of the chemistry on our team. Dakota Burstey. Dakota worked very hard here this year. You know, punted for us, did a nice job punting. Uh, played corner. Uh, really, really got better. Uh, I think this year he struggled a little bit last year, and 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 worked and got better this year. At uh, uh, I think he had five passes defended this year. But uh, again, Coda's a great student. He's gonna he's gonna have great success in life. And Dylan Coleman. You know, Dylan was a little undersized, but he he helped us out on the defensive line. He got some playing time this year as a senior. Uh, again, a, a great piece of the puzzle. You know, uh, a, lot, a lot of the kids. Uh, in terms of being a senior leader and, and, and working together with those seniors, he, you know, was a big piece of that in showing up every week and helping us get better. Brody Ford. 
you know, Brody had an injury before the first game, um, you know, and, and, and really his off season had an outstanding off season and had a, had a knee injury, uh, before the first game. And it took him a little while to get over that. And, you know, that kind of, kind of hurt his senior season, but he came on late, uh, got back to his old self and, and, uh, did a really nice job on the O line and D line. Hunter Coley. Hunter again, uh, you know, I feel like probably our most consistent offensive lineman, defensive lineman, uh, did a great job. Fun kid, uh, always laughing and goofing around, but did it, did a really nice job on the offensive and defensive line this year. Dayton Campbell. Dayton came a long way. You know, he, we, we, uh, needed him to step up and, and be an offensive lineman this year and really step into that starting rotation. And because of some of the injuries we had, uh, you know, for, to Brody Ford, for example, uh, Dayton stepped in and, and played really well at offensive line and ended up doing a pretty good nice job at defensive line at the end of the year. Okay. And if I said, I can't remember, it was it Davin or Davin? It's a Davin. Davin. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll edit that out. <laughs> Davin Miller. And Devin, great, great kid. Uh, had an, a knee injury uh, mid-season and didn't get to play the rest of the year. But um, very, very smart kid. Uh, really did a nice job on our O line and D lines. And, and he was really a, um, you know, when he was playing before his injury, was a big piece of communication and, and making sure we were talking on the O line. A really good kid. Dawson Begley. Dawson was our center the last two years. You know, smart kid. It takes a it takes a guy like that to kind of, you know spearhead all the communication that goes on on the def- on the offensive line. Uh, so so Dawson just did a great job at center the last two years. And Gabe Falkenberg. Gabe really came on as a defensive lineman this year. Um, you know, we needed him to step up. He's a, he was a big kid, fast kid. Uh, had a knee injury uh, before going into the, the uh, Charlestown game and didn't get to play that game or, or the Southridge game, but, but uh, really came along to be a nice defensive player for us, for us this year. And you know it, it, it's always tough to see the seniors go, but you know your your, your covers aren't bare with with like players like Meredith and Goldsberry and et cetera coming back. No, uh, not at all. I mean, we we are like I said, we always uh, appreciate our seniors and, and we wish them well. But um, and 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 they're a great group of kids. Um, and then and then after we uh, talk to them uh, on Monday when we turn in equipment, we. We uh, shake their hands, give them a hug, and, and uh, they leave. And then we look at the young guys and say, okay, it's time to get to work. Uh, it's time to start planning for the 2023 season. And, and, you know, we feel good about the talent we have coming. Our JV team went undefeated this year. Uh, we, we, I don't think we've had a JV team go undefeated for probably uh, uh, 15 years. Um, and, and so very, very excited about that group coming up and, and how it will mesh with the, the kids that played varsity this year. And, and, uh, you know, we feel like the future's, future's bright at Harry Chills, but we need to, we've got to put in the work. You know, we've got a lot of good teams in our conference. Uh, you know, Southridge and Gibson have had a lot of set, success here recently, uh, in our conference and all, you know, teams on our schedule. Um, and, and we need to, to, to get back to where we're, uh, you know, competing with those two teams and, and uh, coming out on the right side of those games uh, to have the success we want to have. Well, Coach, bigger, stronger, faster. Yeah, I agree. That's, that's a, it's the time of year to get on that. Get, uh, get in the weight room, put on some good weight, uh, work on speed and agility and skills. I mean, we've, we've talked about all that yesterday at our meeting, and, and uh, you know, right now it's, it's up to those kids and, uh, you know, us as coaches to, to, to reflect on uh, what went well and, and what we need to do differently to, to get better, uh, you know, as a, individually and as a team. And, and, you know, we have a good staff here and we have a good group of kids, so we'll, we'll get to work and we'll get on it. Well, Coach, good luck the rest of this off season, and uh, we'll see you next season. Thanks, Joe. I really appreciate all you do. And you're listening to the Top of the Show on the Top of the Sports Network uh, by Mode and Books for Communication. We'll see you next season. Hey everyone, Joey Chestnut here, world champion competitive eater. I follow Southwest Indiana Sports Network, and if you're hungry for sports, you should follow them too. 